So the second one is called think like an, I mean, is uh, treat life as an experiment. And this is partly about risk. This is a partly about actually being willing to fail. Because experiments, as I said earlier, they're not all successes. That's why they call them experiments, right? And so if you treat life an experiment, you've got to be prepared for some stuff not to work out. You know, I'm a, an author, and I take this approach with books, too, because you, can, you go to a bookstore, and you look at the books, you know, the average book is like 300 pages long. That can be intimidating. If you, you know, if mom raised you that once you start something, you've got to finish it, then a 300-page book, there's some big risk in cracking it open, right? Whereas if you treat that as an experiment and say, look, I'm just going to read the first 10 pages and then see how I feel, and if that's good, I'm going to continue, right? Then a book is not so scary. Then next thing you know, you read 10, 20, and 30, and if it's a good book, you get all the way through it, right? But what got you into it in the first place is you were willing to treat it as an experiment. Because if you go whole hog, if you've got to you know, do the whole thing, you know, that that scares people away. And so you can go through your whole life with this method of it's like, look, I'm going to try this. I can put up with anything for a day. I can, you know, I'm going to see how this works. And so you get in the habit of you're failing, but ideally you're failing forward. You're failing in a way that has a little bit of learning attached to each one. And historically, the most famous guy in this experiment or category here in the US is this guy, right? Thomas Edison, right? And do we tend to think of Thomas Edison as a success? Right? I think we do. I think he's the most prolific inventor in the history of America. He made you know, light bulbs, of course, we all know, phonographs. He's, you know, he had a whole long list of things, including tattoo pens. In fact, I think we're still using Edison's design today in the tattoo pen department. He also left us General Electric, which is going pretty strong uh, still after all these years, 120 years or whatever it is. But Edison, we think of him as success. No, he was piling up all kinds of failures. He wouldn't use that word. At one point in his life, he said, well, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that do not work. He was trying to come up with the, the filament for an electric light bulb. 10,000 things he tried. Think how frustrating that must have been. Well, he stuck with it, we, you know, and it worked out pretty well in the end. So he treated life as an experiment. He had this great group, this great team around him, and they were doing multiple experiments every day until they came up with a success. And the fact that one of them failed, no big deal. I got 9,000 other failures out there, right? And so Edison, way long time ago, so some people, especially People the age of some of the people in the room think, oh, that's a 19th century example. Don't talk to me about that. Here's two examples from the 20th century that have spilled over into the 21st century, WD-40. Anybody have any WD-40 at home? Right? I, I suppose it's not that convenient in dorm rooms, but trust me, almost every house in America has got WD-40. I spoke in Brazil recently, and they all had WD-40 in their houses. Ever think about the name? I didn't. Right? WD. That's, well... That's obvious because it's an oil, right? So it does water displacement, right? Catchy, name only an engineer could love. Anyhow, WD, but the 40 is what I want to talk about. 40 is because the first 39 formulas failed. They stuck with it through 39 failures. They got to formula number 40, and they did darn good with that one, right? This is a consumer product unchanged for about 50 years. And you never get a chance to do that, but WD-40 did. And then that is nothing compared to this guy, James Dyson. Anybody ever seen his cyclonic vacuums? They reportedly work pretty well. Anyhow, lots of people. Okay. Anyhow, James Dyson, if you read his book, Jim Dyson says he had 5,128 failures. 5,128 prototypes before he had something he could sell. Man, that must have taken a long time, right? But he did pretty well in the end. You know, he's one of the richest guys in the UK because his products ended up being such a tremendous success. But 5,128 failures along the way, I got two questions. I ever meet Jim Dyson, I'm asking him two things. The first thing is, why'd you keep track, right? Once I get over 1,000 failures, I would just say lots, you know, lots. I don't need to know that when I'm into 5,000 failures, just a lot of failures, right? But way more important than that, which relates to my comment earlier, is was he married at the time? <laughs> right, because that is one patient spouse. I can just see her saying, Jim, get out of the garage and get a job, right? But, but he didn't, and uh, he stuck with it. He had lots of failures. He was willing to tolerate lots of failures, and it worked out pretty well for him in the end.